Hey y'all, usually in these videos, I try to give you something practical that you can implement in your life to help you practically day by day, moment by moment, walk out your life with Christ. But today, I kind of just want to focus on a reminder. Sometimes when we're walking with Christ, we just need a reminder of how good God is and what he does for us because I think if we're gonna be honest with ourselves, we may go, you know what, I know all of these things about God are true, but life around me, it's just hard for me to see that. And so sometimes it's good to circle back around and see what it is that God actually does for us. I'm gonna be talking about Nehemiah 9. And if you're reading along with us in this, if you're not, it's okay, but if you're reading along with us in this, we read it on the 20th, which I believe was Friday. So, just as a recap, remember Nehemiah has come back to the destroyed Jerusalem to rebuild it and to rebuild the wall in particular around it. And so he's gotten to this place where he is doing that. In Nehemiah 9, it is a psalm of praise. It is just talking about all the things that God did for the Israelites, the ancient Israelites, had done for them up to that point. And so if I would, if I were you, I would go ahead and turn to Nehemiah 9. And if you have to look it up in your uh, table of contents, don't feel bad. I feel like probably 95% of Christians would have to do that. So look that up and turn to it because this is what I did and I would encourage you to do it just because I think it just um, kind of drives it home for us. If you'll see, as you see, I guess I should say, see how I just kind of circled a bunch of things? What I circled there are verbs, actions actions that God took on behalf of the Israelites. And God is never changing, immutable is that word. He never changes. So if he was this way with the Israelites, why would he not be that way for his children today? So I'm going to read through it a little bit. And if you'd like to read along with me, that'd be great. If you want to fast forward through this, you can, but do you really want to fast forward through the word of God? Just saying. Okay, so we are in Nehemiah 9, starting in verse 5. Where does that start? Verse 5. About 5b, it says, May your glorious name be praised. May it be exalted above all blessing and praise. So as we're going through here, I want you to circle the actions that God takes. You alone are the Lord. You made the skies, so I would circle made there. You made the skies and the heavens and all the stars. You made the earth and the seas and everything in them. You preserve them all, so I would circle preserve. You preserve them all and the angels of heaven worship you. So there are other actions in there, but highlight or circle the actions of God because that's what we're focusing on. And I didn't circle it again if I had already circled that word. So even though it says made twice, I only circled it once. All right, verse seven, you are the Lord God who chose Abram and brought him from Ur of the Chaldeans and renamed him Abraham. So chose, brought, renamed. When he had proved himself faithful, you made a covenant with him to give him and his descendants the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Jebusites, and Girgashites. And you have done what you promised for you are always true to your word. So I circled have done what you promised. Verse nine, you saw the misery of your ancestors in Egypt, and you heard their cries from beside the Red Sea. So saw and heard. You displayed miraculous signs and wonders against Pharaoh, his officials, and all his people, for you knew how arrogantly they were treating our ancestors. So displayed, knew. You have a glorious reputation that has never been forgotten. You divided the sea for your people so that they could walk through on dry land and then you hurled their enemies into the depths of the sea so divided and hurled they sank like stones beneath the mighty waters you led our ancestors by a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night so that they could find their way led was the one I circled there verse 13 you came down at Mount Sinai and spoke to them from heaven came down and spoke you gave them regulations and instructions that were just and decrees and commands that were good so gave. You instructed them concerning your holy Sabbath, and you commanded them through Moses, your servant, to obey all your commands, decrees, and instructions. So instructed and commanded. 
verse 15. You gave them bread from heaven when they were hungry and water from the rock when they were thirsty. You commanded them to go and take possession of the land you had sworn to give them. But your ancestors were proud and stubborn, and they paid no attention to your commands. They refused to obey and did not remember the miracles you had done for them. Instead, they became stubborn and appointed a leader to take them back to their slavery in Egypt. But you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful, slow to become angry, and rich in unfailing love. Side note, I underline that because I love that description of him. You did not abandon them. Even when they made an idol shaped like a calf and said, this is your God who brought you out of Egypt, they committed terrible blasphemies. Okay, I circle did not abandon because not only am I circling what he did, but I'm also circling what he did not do. Verse 19, but in your great mercy, you did not abandon them to die in the wilderness. The pillar of clouds still led them forward by day and the pillar of fire showed them the way through the night. You sent your good spirit to instruct them, and you did not stop giving them manna from heaven or water for their thirst. So I have sent in verse 20 and did not stop giving. Verse 21, for 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness, and they lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell. So sustained right there. And then if you want to, you can go ahead. I'm not going to read all the rest of this. Maybe I will. I'm not going to read it. I've already been on here for six minutes. So go through there for 22 through the rest of the chapter and just keep circling all the things that he did. Here's why I wanted to do that. We need to know how God purposefully acts on our behalf. It's He's not just a cool thought. He's not just, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. He is active. He is actively working in our lives every day. So if we look back just through that and you say, okay, that he made and preserved. He made and preserved the skies in heaven. He makes you. He preserves you every single day. You have breath because he gives it to you. It says that the, the, that the Israelites were chosen, that God chose them, he brought them where he wanted them, and then he renamed them. Do you need to remember that you're chosen today by him? Do you need to remember that he's brought you right where you are and he will get you through it and help you through it? Do you need to remember that You've been renamed. You're no longer your old self if you're walking in Christ. You are now free. You're now clean. You're now pure. You're now forgiven. You're now strong. You're now mighty. You're now full of purpose. Those are your new names that he has given you. Do you need to remember that? It says that he kept his promises. Remember that God keeps every promise that he's ever given you. It says that he saw, he heard, and he knew. He sees you. He hears you. And he knows everything that is happening in and around you and to you. And he's handling it. He displayed miracles. He divided the sea. He hurled the enemies. So what do you need to know? That What kind of miracle do you need? Talk to God about that. He came down and he led them. And he leads us. He's in our midst. If you're a believer, you have Jesus living. You have the Spirit of God living inside of you, the Holy Spirit. And he's leading you. You're never like left to figure it all out. He spoke and instructed and commanded. He does the same through his word, through your sermons. He's speaking. We got to stop and listen. He gave. That is his nature to give. So we need to be in a state of receiving and not being like, mm, I'm going to handle it on my own. He, he sent his spirit for help. Then on the back, if you go through there and you look at some other things, it says that he placed them, he helped them, he subdued enemies, he warned them, and when they didn't listen, he did discipline them. And so he will warn us, and if we don't listen, he will discipline us, not out of anger or out of frustration, but out of a heart of instructing and bringing us back to him, always bringing us back to him. And then he sent liberators. He rescued because that is also his heart, to rescue. He kept his covenant and he showered them. That, that's the word used in mine. He showered them with goodness. What he did not do, he did not abandon them ever. He did not stop giving them manna. So he never stops giving to us. He's never like, nah, I'm good. You're tapped out. That's it. I'm done. He's always giving. And he did not destroy them completely. He's, his heart is not to destroy. His heart is to give life. So my suggestion is to do exactly 
to tell you to do exactly what I did, go through there, circle all those words, and then pick a couple to focus on this week. Wake up every morning and go, today I'm going to remember that God chose me. I'm chosen, and so I'm important to him, and I'm gonna walk in that this week. Or I'm, gonna, I'm going to choose to listen for his voice because he's always speaking. That's what I'm gonna do this week. So that's my encouragement to you. Remember who God is for you. Remember what he does for you, in you, around you. And jump in there with him and let him do those things and get in a place of receiving those so that you can live the purposeful life that he has for you. All right, y'all have a great week and I will talk to you next time. Bye.